Hi there, and welcome to our guide to using outcomes for push notifications in OneSignal. Outcomes are trackable actions or events that your users trigger either directly or as influenced by your push notifications. Outcomes can be useful for monitoring user engagement and tracking the effectiveness of your push notifications in generating revenue and prompting specific activity. In this video, we'll cover the different outcomes available for push notifications, as well as where to view your outcome statistics and how to set up and track custom outcomes. There are several outcomes that OneSignal tracks automatically that require no additional work to set up. For push notifications, these include clicks, sessions, and confirmed deliveries. Clicks are the number of times that users have clicked on a notification that leads to opening your app. Sessions are the number of times users have opened the app after it's been out of focus for at least 30 seconds. And confirmed deliveries are the number of devices that have responded directly to OneSignal to confirm that they have received a notification. Please note that this is different from the delivered statistic, which measures how many messages were successfully sent to the Google and Apple push servers. There are also custom outcomes which you can configure yourself. More on this in a moment. Outcomes are always logged as either direct, influenced, or unattributed. Direct means the outcome occurred during a session directly after the user clicked a push notification. As such, the native click outcomes will always be considered as direct outcomes. Influenced means a push was received, but the user didn't click it. Instead, they open the app directly and perform the event triggering the outcome within your influence time window. For example, if your user receives a push notification but swipes it away, then starts a new session within your influence window and triggers your outcome, this will be considered an influenced outcome. You can change the duration of the influence window by going to Settings, Messaging, Influenced Opens, and selecting a value from the drop-down menu. Finally, unattributed outcomes are any outcomes that are not direct and that are registered outside of the influence time period. For a global view of all of your outcomes across all messages and all messaging channels, you can go to the Dashboard tab and scroll down to the Global Outcomes section. Here, you'll see a graph showing your outcomes over time and various filter options. Above the graph, you can change the time period, the platform, and the attribution type shown on the graph. You can also change whether to display the results as a count of individual outcomes or a sum of these outcomes' values. Please note that the sum option only works for outcomes that have a value set for them. More on this later. Below the graph, you can change which outcomes are displayed. Here we can see that the standard outcomes are being displayed, but you can remove some of these and add any custom outcomes to the graph as needed. As you'll see in a minute, your custom outcomes will be available once sent to one signal through our SDK. Below the graph, you can also see a table of figures showing the outcomes for a more precise view. Finally, you can export a report of either your selected outcomes or all outcomes into a CSV file, which will then be emailed to your email address. As well as the global view, you can also see the outcomes for any particular message you've sent by finding that message in either the delivery tab or under messages push and clicking into the message. Here you can see a graph which is identical to the one on the dashboard, but which shows outcomes data only for this specific message. All of the functions in this graph work in the same way as the one on the dashboard tab. You can also set up your own custom outcomes. To demonstrate how this works, I've set up a simple iOS app which sends outcomes to one signal. All custom outcomes are sent using one of three SDK methods, add outcome, add unique outcome, and add outcome with value. Add outcome simply increases the count for the outcome which is passed to it each time it's invoked. Add unique outcome increases the count by one only once per subscription per notification. Finally, add outcome with value takes both an outcome name and an outcome value to attribute to this outcome, and it will increase the count of the outcome by one and the sum of the value of the outcome by whatever value is passed to it each time that it's invoked. Please note that for web push and swift programming, add outcome with value is not used, and you can simply pass a value to the add outcome method, as seen here. In this demo app, I've set up two fields in which to input an outcome name and value. In reality, you're more likely to hard code in the outcome name and only set the value dynamically. But let's test this out to see how it works. When I enter an outcome name and click add outcome, we can see that instantly this outcome appears in our global outcomes chart. If I go back and click this again, we'll see the number of outcomes rise by one. 
If I send a unique outcome, we see that it registers. But if I go back and click the button again, no matter how many times I click it, the count doesn't increase. Finally, if I input a value, then my code registers this and uses this value in add outcome with value to increase the sum for this outcome. We can see here that it is increased by 10, but I can go back and change the value to 100, and we can now see that it says 110. Notice that all of these outcomes have been classed as unattributed because we haven't received any push notifications. Let's send a push to click on in order to open the app and see what happens then. We can see that when we set an outcome this time, the outcome has been set to direct. We can also open up the delivery report for that notification and check the outcome specific to the notification there. As noted earlier, you can change your outcome's influenced open period by going to Settings, Messaging, Influenced Opens, and selecting a value from the drop-down menu. On this screen, you can also select specific custom outcomes to stop being tracked. Once you've stopped tracking an outcome, you'll no longer see it as an option in your outcomes chart, and the figures for this outcome will no longer increase if your users trigger it within your app. Earlier in the video, I mentioned that confirmed deliveries are different from the delivered total that you'll see in your message reports, and that often, these figures will not be the same. The standard delivered stat means one signal successfully sent the messages to the push notification service, such as Apple's APNS service or Google's FCM service. This indicates that the push service have received the message from us and have passed it on to the end user via their push service. Confirmed delivery receipts, on the other hand, are sent directly to one signal from the user's device to confirm that the message has arrived. It's very common for the confirmed delivery count to not match the delivered count for several reasons, including the device being switched off, having an unstable or no network connection, the token is invalid, or the device is unsubscribed and we've not had an unsubscribe event from APNS or FCM yet. If you find that you have significantly lower confirmed delivery rates than you expect, there may be an issue with your implementation. See our documentation for a list of things to check. For more details on confirmed deliveries, including troubleshooting steps, please see our guide at documentation.onesignal.com or scan the QR code on the screen now. Thank you for watching our Push Outcomes Guide. For more information on outcomes and other analytics with OneSignal, please visit our documentation pages or scan or click the QR codes on the screen.